Hi, I'm Andrew Whitner, the creator of Enlarge. Enlarge is a new app that lets you use your iPhone, iPod Touch and iPad as a predictive exposure computer with your traditional optical darkroom enlarger. It lets you compute the exposure time needed to expose an enlargement of any given size from any given negative once you know the exposure time needed to expose an enlargement of any one size. This makes it handy for economically making large enlargements and for making sets of differently sized matching enlargements. Since I introduced Enlarge on the Apple App Store in the middle of 2017, it's been well received by users. A number of commercial print labs, which still operate traditional darkrooms, are using it to save time, photo paper and photo processing chemistry when making their larger enlargements and they can offer their customers special deals on multiple print sizes from the same negative. But I've had some negative feedback too. Some enlarger operators who are perfectly happy with the way they make their larger prints at the moment say that enlarge is too complicated to set up according to the detailed instructions printed in my blogspot, enlargedarkroomblogspot.com and they've asked me if there isn't a quicker simpler way to get going with it. And the answer is that yes there is. So here's the quickest, simplest way to set up Enlarge for use with your Enlarger. First of all, before explaining how to do this, I'll just explain what I'm doing first. By setting up Enlarge to work with this Enlarger, I'm measuring the relative light output of this Enlarger at two different enlargement magnifications. I'm going to make one measurement at its lowest focusable magnification down here and another one at its 10 magnification position up here. And once I've done this, Enlarge will be able to compute the equivalent exposure times needed for all magnification positions between them and also for even larger enlargements which are made higher up beyond this range. Now, Enlarge doesn't have any light metering ability. Instead of measuring the light output directly as a light meter might do it, I'll use a good quality photo paper at the print easel, together with its required exposure time, to show us the relative light output as received by the photo paper itself. So here's the way it works. I'll start off by lowering the enlarger head all the way to the bottom of its focusable range, like so. And I'll focus the negative for the print. Then I'll remove my test negative from the negative carrier. And I'll stop the enlarging lens down to its smallest aperture. With this lens, it's f22. And I'll make a stepped test print of the empty negative carrier field. In this instance, using five exposure steps of one second each. And here's my developed low magnification test print. It uses exposure steps of one, two, three, four and five seconds. I'm not looking for pure white or solid black here, but just a range of greys. And I haven't bothered to use any contrast filtration. So that's the low magnification test print completed. Now I'll measure the negative to print distance used to make it. In this case it's 276 millimeters, And I'll make a note of it for use later when I enter the test data from this print into Enlarge. Now the next step is to raise the Enlarger head to its 10 magnification position in order to make the high magnification test print. To find 10 magnifications with your enlarger, multiply the focal length of your enlarging lens by 12.1. So in this case I'm using a 60mm lens and when I multiply 60mm by 12.1 I get 726mm. So that's my 10 magnification position with the negative positioned 726mm above the print easel. Now, with my negative plane positioned at this 10 magnification height, 
it means that the image of the negative carrier field, which is actually 24 by 36 millimeters at the negative carrier, should appear 10 times larger at the print easel. Thus it should appear 240 by 360 millimeters. But when I measure the projected image here at the print easel, I find that it doesn't, and that's because the lens is not focused correctly. So I'll adjust the lens focus so that the projected image is 360 millimeters wide. And at that point, the projected image will be fairly well focused, good enough for what we're doing. Notice that I haven't touched the lens iris ring, and that's important. Because we're measuring the relative light output of the whole enlarger system at different print magnifications, we want the lens to have the same light transmission ability for both measurements. So now that our 10 magnification position is set up and the lens is fairly accurately focused, it doesn't have to be exact, we're ready to measure the relative light output of the enlarger at this high position. Now to do this I'll make a small stepped test print of the centre of this larger projected field. We don't need to print the whole field and I'll adjust the print's step exposure time so that the finished stepped print looks the same as the earlier print made at the low magnification position and that way the exposure times of the two finished successful matching prints will act as a practical and useful measurement of the enlarger's relative brightness difference at these two positions. So here's my successful matching print. I found that when I used five steps of 11 seconds, I got this perfectly matching high magnification test print. And that completes the calibration process. Now all I need to do is enter the negative to print distances and the basic step exposure times, which we use to make each of these two matching prints into the Enlarge Create Enlarger Profile screen. Then I type in a description of the Enlarger and enter the Enlarging Lens Focal Length as marked on the lens. Then I tap Save All and that's it. My calibration profile now appears in a selection list for use in actual enlarging. Enlarge stores an unlimited number of calibration profiles so that you can easily use it with any number of different enlargers or enlarger assemblies. So to summarise, all you really need to do is make two focused matching enlargements, each at a different print magnification, using the same lens iris setting for both prints, and adjust the exposure time used for the higher print so that its tones match those of the lower print. Then enter the negative to print distance and comparative exposure time used for each of the two prints into the Create Enlarger Profile screen. And that's it. Now that Enlarge is calibrated to work with this Enlarger, in my next video I'll show you how to use it to make matched enlargements and matching enlargements of different sizes. Thanks for watching.